Getting home to finding your dog or puppy not being able to put any weight on its leg is never fun. And just like us humans, dogs do sometimes break bones, slip discs, tear ligaments and sprain muscles that can often lead to a sudden onset of lameness or limping. So in this video, I will be discussing all the different causes of lameness in dogs, how to recognize when it is an emergency, and I will also be sharing some tips and tricks on how you can both treat and prevent lameness in your dog. Now, lameness can vary from subtle pain and tenderness to a complete inability to put any weight on the affected limb and can involve one to all four limbs at the same time. If the forelimb is affected, the animal generally lifts its head and if the hind limb is affected, the animal generally lowers its head when putting weight on the affected limb. This is simply to shift weight off of the affected limb in order to try and minimize the pain felt when walking. You may also notice a shortened stride on the affected side as well as concurrent vocalization, loss of muscle mass, enlarged joints and an abnormal posture when walking, running or climbing up the stairs. The lameness may also even become worse after excessive exercise and during cold temperatures. Now there is a long list of potential causes for lameness in dogs and this can be roughly categorized into four sections, namely paw injury, joint disease, bone disease and trauma. Any foreign material such as nails, glass and thorns that are lodged into your dog's foot make it very uncomfortable to walk and can lead to infection and things like lacerations, broken toenails, frostbite and bruising will cause a lot of tenderness and you will probably notice your dog constantly licking at the affected paw. Some conditions can cause gradual wear and tear on joints and the musculoskeletal system that can lead to limping in dogs. These conditions include osteochondritis, hip and elbow dysplasia, cranial cruciate ligament rupture, patellar luxation and intervertebral disc disease. Some dogs, such as large breed puppies, are at an increased risk of developing conditions such as hypertrophic osteodystrophy and panosteitis, which makes walking very painful. And some cancers, such as osteosarcoma, also affects bones and will require a prompt diagnosis as the prognosis becomes rapidly worse the longer you postpone the treatment. Trauma is probably the most common cause of limping in dogs and can range from car accidents to sports injuries that will usually result in broken bones, fractures, dislocations, torn ligaments and slipped discs. This will be rather acute and you will most of the time notice that the dog cannot put any weight on the affected leg. In severe cases of trauma, limbs may dangle at an unnatural angle when fractured or dislocated and you may even notice bone piercing the skin which will obviously be accompanied by excessive bleeding and swelling of the affected area and pets who dra are dragging their limbs may also be suffering from nerve damage. Now, all of these conditions require immediate veterinary attention. Your vet will need to take a full history, perform a thorough physical and orthopedic exam and ideally need to take x-rays to evaluate the condition of the joints and the bones. And if the injury is very subtle or only involves soft tissue, then you may also need to perform CT and MRI scans to pinpoint the damage and to make an accurate diagnosis. Joint fluid analysis may also be recommended and kind of the main aim of this is to try and differentiate between musculoskeletal, neurogenic and metabolic causes so that the dog can be treated accordingly. Treatment will obviously depend on the underlying cause. Your vet may prescribe pain medication in the form of anti-inflammatories, opioids or steroids to try and reduce the inflammation of the muscles and the nerves alongside some cage rest for a couple of days to a couple of weeks if it is only a minor acute problem. If your dog is suffering from a more chronic condition such as arthritis then your vet may recommend to put the dog on a joint supplement to help restore the normal fluid and cartilage production within the joint. Uh, you may also be put on a joint specific diet and massage therapy and acupuncture may also be considered. If there are any anatomical abnormalities such as a broken bone, luxated joints or torn ligaments then surgery would be the best way forward. But if it is a very young dog then putting the affected leg in a cast may also be considered. If your dog is showing any of the previously mentioned clinical signs then make sure to follow these steps. Number one. Do not move your dog around unnecessary. He may be snappy because of pain, 
so make sure to restrain him if necessary. Number two, check the paws for any foreign material or cuts as well as broken bones or dislocations by observing the angle of the limb and its stability. If the dog is refusing to put any weight on the affected leg, it is highly possible that we are dealing either with a fracture or a torn ligament. Number three, if there are no obvious breaks and the dog is still able to put some weight on the leg, then confine him to a small area such as a one by one meter crate for a couple of days in order to restrict his movement. Apply a cold compress such as a wet cloth or a bag of frozen vegetables to the joint in order to reduce the inflammation. Number four, if there are persistent lameness, severe swelling, suspected fractures, inability to stand or the dragging of the limbs, then take your dog to the vet immediately. Be gentle when carrying him to the car if he cannot walk by himself and use a sling if necessary. Number five, do not administer over-the-counter medication without first consulting your veterinarian as certain human pain meds such as ibuprofen is very toxic to dogs and will cause severe side effects. So, here are five easy tips on how you can prevent your dog from unnecessary getting lame. Number one, prevent your dog from getting overweight. Extra weight puts extra strain on joints and may predispose him to developing arthritis later in life. Also, fat is pro-inflammatory, which will make his joints hurt even more. Number two, trim his toenails in order to prevent ingrowing nails causing pain and twisted foot joints due to abnormal development. Number three, maintain exercise time and intensity within your dog's own comfort level and fitness. Number four, create traction in your house by adding rugs and carpets to slippery floors. And number five, consider giving your dog a joint supplement such as GCS Joint Care, Mobiflex and Nutridol. Make sure to check that the joint supplement contain at the very least glucosamine hydrochloride, chondroitin sulfate and omega-3 fatty acids. And do your own research as to which joint supplement you want to use as the markets are flooded with ineffective commercial products that you will waste your money on if you are not careful. So as you can see some causes of lameness will resolve quickly and will therefore not have a permanent effect on the health of your dog whereas others may require lifelong treatment and management and monitoring the response to treatment is an important factor of both the diagnosis and treatment of lameness in dogs and it is important to take your dog in for follow-up appointments if necessary in order to prevent permanent damage. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know down in the comments if your dog ever suffered from lameness and what you and your vet did to help him. And if you found the content to be helpful, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and your family. And if you are new to my channel, consider subscribing as I'll be posting new videos on interesting pet related topics every week. As always, have a lucky day and I'll see you in another video next week. Cheers!